My name is Kayla. I live in Southeast Michigan and I'm a lover of plants. My favorites being indoor plants, native plants, and medicinal plants. So if any of those topics are of interest to you, please like and subscribe. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Nature Will Nurture. So today, um, I, I lost footage to what I was originally going to, uh, to try and work on. Um, yay, computers! Um, so instead I decided I'll do some leaf cleaning and maybe put some plant labels in them, something I've been wanting to do for a long time, but um, this is a good idea to start now. So I have a few different tools with me at the ready so I don't have to go digging through my closet of supplies. I have got my tools here, I've got a pair of scissors, not that regular scissors are used very often, but I've got a couple pairs of hand pruners, just the little tiny ones, um, they should probably be cleaned. Um, a nice pair of large pruners, in case I have to do large cuts, which is unlikely. Um, a pencil for when I'm writing down the labels. Um, I've got a little little teeny tiny spoon that came with a planter my sister gave me for Christmas. Uh, I think it was last year. Um, that comes in handy when I'm trying to scoop things like worm castings or my systemic insecticide, which is a powder um, or granular. Um, and I scoop it out of the container and just sprinkle it on the soil so I've got that handy. A um, couple other things in here. I have also got some Q-tips. Hopefully that's enough. I have also got, um, this is a mixture of, I think when, when the pandemic started, I couldn't find rubbing alcohol. So I, I used um, hydrogen peroxide to see if that would help. Um, so far, it doesn't seem to be any doing anything poorly to the to the plant, so long as the plant is um, well watered and everything beforehand um, to make sure it doesn't hurt the plant, but only hurts the insects. Um, so I've got that. It's also got a dash of dish soap in there, and then the rest is filled with water. So like, I think I probably use like twenty percent of hydrogen peroxide in this, and then water. I've got pure water here. I also have this, um, which I'm trying out, um, it's uh, Dr. Earth Final Stop, not promoted or anything, but somebody gave it to me um, in payment for some plants I was giving away from work, um, or cuttings or something like that. She traded this with me, or I don't know, she got it for me, that's all. Somebody I know off of Facebook. Yard and Garden Insect Killer, Organic Gardening, and it just uses... Uh, rosemary oil, sesame oil, peppermint, thyme, cinnamon, and garlic oils, and then the rest is glycerin, lecithin, and water as the ingredients. Um, it's got an interesting smell, so, uh, you know, but, yeah, a leaf cleaner. Oh. Yeah. I have also got my handy dandy systemics um, this is uh, not to be used for spider mites so I do have a plant here that I do need to wipe down for some spider mites that I found um, yesterday while I was filming my time lapse <laughs> uh, they got deleted um, so I'm just gonna clean some leaves right so this doesn't work on um, the spider plant spider mites but it does work on other things like mealy bugs and um, I think scale. I'm, I'm working on scale. It's not super confident in the labeling for scale. Um, so this is what I use the little sp tiny spoon for. Now, this is just in case. And then if I found a plant growing, I've got worm castings here. This I think is by Black Gold, if I remember correctly. So, and paper towels. I've got paper towels as well. Right, let's get started on the plant that has spider mites, yeah? I'll talk a little bit about 
how I got these plants as well. Uh, this is a little Maranta Lucanura um, Lemon Lime. So first thing I'm going to take off this shriveled leaf here. And I think for this, I mean, I'm probably just going to use water most of the time to wipe down the leaves. Just because it's, I mean, wiping will take care of an insect so long as you see it and you get to it, okay? Um, that's the nice thing about just water. Um, I would love to be able to shower things down in my shower. Our water has been an issue um, in this house. We just moved here over the summer. Um, it's January 2nd right now. We moved here... Well, really, we started living here beginning of July. And um, we live kind of in the country. It's it's woodlandy out here. We live amongst um, lakes and things like that. Um, and we are on a well. So our water is not very good for drinking. Uh, not straight out of the uh, spigot, at least. Um, we do have water softener, which also poses another issue for plants. What wa water softener does is it removes all of the um, like iron and calcium and other uh, abundant minerals that are found in our water, in our groundwater. And the water softener removes all of those. And the way it does that is through salts. And um, so salt is not good for plants in general. Um, the roots, it prevents the roots from bringing up water and eventually the plants will, will die. Um, so bringing up water, bringing up nutrients, bringing up water. Um, Cause it kind of like, I think, cakes around the roots, which just, you know, makes the roots not work very well. So, can't use softened water. Uh, so I, the only outlet of water that I could find that wasn't connected directly to the soft water was through the outside spigot, hose spigot. So what I end up doing, and so I water the plants with well water most of the time. Once in a while, if I'm motivated, I'll buy spring water from the grocery store. Um, I use distilled water as well for neti potting, which is something you do to you rinse distilled water with saline solution through your sinuses. And that's for my Nepenthes, my carnivorous plant that I just bought yesterday, no, a couple days ago, which is in a different haul. So that's good to use on carnivorous plants. So uh, what I do with the well water from the spigot is I have an extendable hose uh, that I crack open my window in my bedroom back there, uh, run the hose through the window into the room. I have a bucket over here that I fill up with the water and especially now because it's cold, um, it takes a long time for the water to pressurized through so I don't feel like doing it every week so I decided to start filling up jugs of water as well just to reuse the jugs too um, and so that saves me an extra trip or the hassle of doing the hose through the window it's a long story with the water it's still a work in progress as to long-term use um, I did find, too, that I think the pH of the water was a starting to affect my plants after a couple months. And the pH is really high in the water. And so uh, 
I add a little bit of vinegar. We'll see so far it looks like the plants are responding a little bit more positively to having the water, having a little bit of vinegar added to the to the bucket. Um, yeah. Always fun. But I'm going to look into getting a rain barrel. I meant to sometime this past fall, but COVID makes things a little crazy, and so some things aren't as much of a priority. So there we go. I should probably inspect this a little closer, actually. Um, would recommend either sanitizing your hands in between cleaning plants or washing your hands or at least rinsing them off because you could have spider mites on your fingers, for instance. In my job, I have a little jar of sanitizer that I, in between plants, I, that I know have, it, have a pest issue. Um, I sanitize my, my gloves just to, to kill anything off. I would almost recommend using like a brush to clean off some of the, le the leaves on top. I'm not going to for this since I'm cleaning it for pests, but it does look like, I mean these are kind of fuzzier, velvetier leaves. So when I'm cleaning the leaves, I'm also very gentle. I'm holding the leaves. Yay, sanitizer. Makes me feel a little better too. I'm so ingrained. So my job, let me get to my job for a second. I work in interior scaping. I like to tell people interior landscaping because um, I take care of plants indoors in um, hotels, in offices, in people's homes. Uh, I have a few people's homes I, I, I do. Um, I can't say any place for confidentiality purposes, um, but yeah, those plants you see going into, you know, your office that look generally healthy, <laughs> hopefully healthy, uh, that might be somebody like me taking care of that plant and not just somebody from the office, um, but an actual contracted company like the one I work for. Right before I put it back, let me put a label on it. Handy dandy pencil. Yep, gonna have to Google the name really quick. Oh. Uh -huh. So it looks like this is a Maranta Leucanura variety Erythronura uh, lemon lime. What a name. A lot of people just call it lemon lime Maranta. Maranta Lucanura lemon lime. I might just stick with that. The variety isn't. It's getting too specific. And you don't need that. Lucanura. And then in single quotations, lemon lime. So one thing I'd like, I would want to mention is that I am a master gardener. I'd like to, to say that somewhat in passing because I am kind of new. Um, I got certified uh, well, I finished my hours. I did all my classes and all my hours in 2019. So 2020, I've been officially certified for about six months, probably. <laughs> um, a little bit delayed because they, you know, with COVID and everything, they had to, things didn't happen as quickly. Um, but technically certified. So uh, I forget where I was going with that. <laughs> Um, one thing I've been trying to keep doing on um, my labels is also to see where the plant comes from. I mean, I'm not going to find lemon lime out in nature, but I might find Lucanura, Maranta Lucanura out in nature. I'm going to Google Maranta Lucanura origin and see what that pulls up for me. Yep, it pulled up uh, Wikipedia. So it's a flowering plant in the Marantaceae family. I think a lot of us are somewhat familiar with that. Um, it is native to the Brazilian tropical forests. Um, Missouri Botanical Garden is also a great resource for plant identification and plant finders. Um, so yeah, I'm going to write on the back of this that it comes from Brazil. And that is just for my love of knowledge. So being a master gardener, you always try to seek scientific 
proof, which um, some practices of mine are probably more out of affordability than what a master gardener would necessarily say to do. I would be like, if you have issues with your water, have your water tested, which we're gonna do, but it's been a crazy year. Can't get to everything all at once. So I'm making do with what I can right now. I did buy a pH meter though, um, but I don't have the uh, calibrating liquid for it. Again, another thing to get on the list of things to get. So let's do This is my philodendron, Macaulay's Finale. See, I already found, I already have my label here. It's a little different style. I don't have where it comes from because it's, it's a complicated hybrid or cultivated variety. So it doesn't really have a mother plant. Um, it does, but it's, it's just been hybridized so much that they don't even really know anymore. I remember doing the research on that when I was labeling it. This isn't gonna stand up very well. I usually have it in the, um, a pot over there that's standing up. I'll just hold it in my lap. So it has been through a lot. His name used to be Frankenstein. Uh, when I was, uh, see I got this probably, mm, maybe winter of 2019, no, sorry, 2018, 2019. And tw the summer of 2019, I decided to put it outside and it got sunburned pretty badly. He made it through. He's lost several of those lower leaves down here. Um, but he's still got some funky leaves here that are super dirty. Uh, when we moved, I had to have everything outside for a while because we didn't have the room ready. I wanted to make this room back here. My husband was all for it. He was glad to find that I could put every, most everything in one room. And this is the smallest room in our house too, so I'm pretty impressed. But I uh, do have to keep in mind space and everything when getting plants. Uh, I do have some scattered throughout the house, but more for decor and um, in front of windows and things like that. Yeah, moving was interesting. I did get rid of a lot of plants. I sold a lot of plants, maybe tossed some plants out because we couldn't move everything. So that was just something that I had to do. But it gave me an opportunity to grow a collection again. It's been interesting growing the collection this time around because with COVID, plants have exploded. I think um, a lot of people have recognized that. And so I've been getting much more of a response when I post plants to my Facebook groups and as a result, I, a lot of people bring me cuttings of things, and it's so sweet. Or, but, you know, I've made some friends with that. Um, and uh, it's been pretty cool keeping up with people like that. Always wondering what plants I've got or if I'd be interested in this other plant that they got. The plant community online has been very, very cool. I would say if you're looking to get plants at an affordable price, or maybe you have a few plants and you're willing to trade for some other types of plants, um, check out a local Facebook group. Um, just type in like you know some of the bigger communities around you or some of them are county-wide um, so you know search your county um, let's say 
Detroit. Detroit's in Wayne County. So you look and see if Wayne County, I'm sure Detroit has um, a plant group. But uh, look up like, um, you know, Wayne County Plant Exchange or something like that. Uh, you're likely to find something. We even in my county have a, a small group going because we're not, it's, it's, they're both, they're new, new groups, so they're pretty small still. I don't really know the extent of our community closer to where I live, but I do know some of the Facebook groups around me are pretty decently large and they have posts pretty much daily. So yeah, post, you know, I've got this plant. You know, wondering if anybody would trade me something for it. You could even do in search of. I haven't done too many in search of plants yet. Uh, mostly because I don't really want to hear what the plant prices are for the plants that I want. So, I don't know. I'm not the type of person to lust after too many plants because I don't want to put that sort of pressure on myself. One time, uh, somewhat recently, there was a plant I bid for on eBay. I bought a couple plants off of eBay, but there was one plant, one of my wishlist plants, which there are very few wishlist plants of mine, but one that I just don't see. Um, I bid on it and actually won it, but then immediately was refunded my money because something happened to the plant. So I felt, felt like something was off about that one. So that's fine with me, whatever. But it definitely is, you know, I'm, I'm new to buying on eBay and stuff, but I've had a couple successful ones. It's just the bidding part, you know, totally throws a wrench into the plan. So I'd recommend, you know, researching plants less uh, desirable. You'll have more luck. Um, I have a, a couple of plants, the couple of plants that I did get from eBay, none of them were bids. And those have been, it was all made it to me. I am still rehabbing a couple cuttings. They weren't cuttings, a couple rooted cuttings of uh, two Jotropha types. Uh, sometime I'll show them to you. The one has one leaf, one brand new leaf on it. The other one I'm still waiting, but it's the stem is still green. So we'll see about that. Uh, just need some time. So yeah, I kind of started this channel to, to try and, and put a voice out there for some of the things that plants can do for us and what we can do for the plants slash mother nature. Um, I think in the beginning of this I said native plants and medicinal plants were also going to be part of this channel. And that is because um, I love native plants. They're so cool. And you know, it's it's one way that we can kind of give back if we start utilizing native plants in our landscapes more. Give back to, to nature. Because she's given us such amazing things. <laughs> I haven't found anything on this. I did battle mealies with this for a while and the systemic really helps to get rid of stuff. Like seriously. I'm lucky because my plant, my cats don't eat my plants. If we get a new kitten, man, I'm gonna be like completely 100% okay with the, the cat eating the plants. And I'm, I'm not sure I would be knowing that I've recently applied systemic insecticide. Don't let your your pets or kids eat your plants that have recently been 
treated with systemic insecticides. It is a poison. The way it works is you pour it on the soil, the whatever the active ingredient is, um, I should probably know that. It is in 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 mid Always read your ingredients. So the way it works is you put a little bit, whatever the uh, I just kind of spoon it on gently, like not a ton, which um, I eyeball it. Let me give you a little bit better of instructions. So for a plant, plant, this is a six inch plant. For a six inch plant, I do two and a half tablespoons. I probably don't even do that much, to be honest. I just sprinkle it so there's a thin layer on the top, maybe you know, work it into the soil a little bit. And then you water it in. And slowly, uh, over the course of the next couple of days, the or a couple of, of weeks, I should say, the plant pulls the chemical up through the roots into the plant tissue and kills anything, anything that is eating the plant. Because the poison is in the plant tissues. So if there's something around the plant but not actually ingesting the plant, it's fine. But after I handling it, I, I do wash my hands too just to make sure. Always be careful. This is uh, unraveling a new leaf. Yay! Let me show you. Right there. This has grown so much <laughs> when I see it and I think about it. Like I said, I used to call this guy Frankenstein. A good idea would be to have him start climbing up something probably. And maybe that's something eventually I do because now I have this channel to motivate me to do things like that. So, yeah. I'm just pulling off um, these leaf sheaths. These uh, help protect the plant leaf as it emerges and they eventually just dry up. Um, so it's okay to remove those. Yeah. So another plant down. I'm just gonna put him right back where he was. Here is another plant. And this is a recent purchase as well, also from a Facebook group. Um, it was an affordable price for me. Um, this is a philodendron myoi, so I do need a plant label for it. It did, I think, have some spider mites, so um, along with being, which I think is what some of this yellowing is from, so it's stressed from not only having as, like seriously like two three spider mites when I saw it so nothing to be super concerned about but enough that I was like oh I should probably wipe that off but it was also exposed to the thrips outbreak I had so and I didn't see anything on that plant so I'm not going to sanitize my hands right now I feel like I've been talking for a little long so I am going to this will be the last one and Call it a video. So I'm gonna do the label first so I don't forget. Myoi. Or is it Myoe? Latin. Myoe. Myo. E. Myoi. And then I'm gonna do origin. It seems to give me some good luck finding information. It is. It's Mayoe, according to Exotic Rainforest, which is another resource I tend to find aeroid information on. Philodendron Mayoe. 
Mary. Also from Brazil. Check that out. Again, I'm probably just going to use water. I brought out the other stuff just to make sure I had it on hand. But I'm, again, most comfortable using just water. As this one grows, I'm going to put it up on my trellis probably. It'll be cool. My trellis is going to be really full. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll find another place for another trellis. I have a new leaf coming in on this one too. It's kind of small, but it's extra lobey. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. A whole three leaves to clean. Let me show you. So you can kind of see the lobes there. Yeah. New leaf. I'm gonna resist the urge to unravel it. Let me just make sure there's no insects on it. Oh yep, there's a thrip. I'm pretty sure I treated this somewhat recently. I just smush it between my fingers. Um, I didn't see any... They leave black dots, which I believe are like where they lay eggs. I didn't, I, don't, I didn't see any of those, so I might just kind of dab this though. Yeah, I still have thrips around this room, so... working on it. It's a lot better than it was. I only find one here or there, so. Okay, so my camera died. My other camera died. Um, so I'll finish it up on this one. Um, if you enjoyed this content, uh, let me know. Give it a like. Subscribe. Um, if you have other things you'd like to see, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching.